Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today's Dragon's Dogma 2 guide is on the quest called A Veil of Gossamer Clouds. Whether you're struggling to figure out how to investigate Sven's letter, or you just want to know how to get the best ending, I'm going to cover all of that here. While this isn't by any means a required quest, it does tie in pretty closely to the main plot of the game. Similar to how the Caged Magistrate involves the subquest The Heel of History, A Veil of Gossamer Clouds has its own subquest called Saint of the Slums. I've heard that this subquest may not be required, but for the sake of this guide I'm going to make sure to show the full experience and I'll be covering both quests in this video. You can begin A Veil of Gossamer Clouds once you've completed the main story quest Feast of Deception, where you need to dress up in the courtly attire and speak with Captain Brandt. For those who have not yet completed Feast of Deception, be aware that this is a cutoff point for a handful of side quests you may or may not have picked up already. For example, quests like Redvin of Calamity will fail if you complete Feast of Deception, but don't worry because the game explicitly asks you if you're ready to commit to this. Shortly after completing Feast of Deception, an NPC will randomly approach you in Vernworth and mention that Sven wants to speak to you. I don't believe this is actually required to start the quest since no quest is added to your log until you actually speak with Sven, so if you don't get this interaction, you should be able to head straight to Sven who's residing in his chambers without requiring any special armor or masks. Here's an easy way to get there. Your objective will be to investigate the letter, and this can be done in two ways. The first person who can help you is Waldar, who is found within the Gracious Hand's vaults. Waldar will read the letter and then deduce that it's a love letter and say that if you want to know more, someone of Batali heritage would be able to provide further help. Speaking to Waldar unlocks the dialogue option, Twas a love letter, at the end of this quest. And you might be able to end the quest prematurely by heading straight to Sven and selecting this option. I wouldn't recommend it though because I don't know if you even get anything by selecting this option, and I find it hard to believe that the rewards would be better than for seeing the quest to the end. Since showing the letter to Waldar is an optional part of the quest, if you don't want to hear his dialogue you only have to show the letter to Elena, which seems to require completing Saint of the Slums. To start this, you first need to overhear a conversation taking place in front of the Gracious Hand between Elena and a concerned Beastern man named Vlazi. I don't have footage of this first interaction, but it basically goes something like this. Flazy approaches Elena and is like, why is my son's health not getting better under your care? And Elena's like, we're doing the best we can, please try to understand. And then Flazy walks away, leaving an opportunity for you to speak to Elena alone. Now the quest doesn't start until you interact with Elena after overhearing this conversation. So even though Saint of the Slums is a time sensitive quest, assuming you actually want to get the best ending, as long as you don't speak to Elena, then there is no urgency. In my game, I overheard their conversation at about the 30 hour mark, and I didn't speak to Elena until around the 50 hour mark, and everything worked out fine. When you do speak to Elena, she will ask you for three miasmite, which is the material that drops from those blue floating phantoms you can find during the night. You can also find the phantoms and loose miasmite on your way to the Sphinx by traveling through the World Send Cavern in the ancient Battlegrounds dungeon. Giving Elena this three miasmite will prompt her to take you on a tour through the Gracious Hand, where you'll meet Vlazi's son, Lubomir. Once everyone else kind of leaves the room, you'll have an opportunity to speak to Lubomir alone. He says something's off about this place and he wants you to investigate, which updates your quest to the next step. You then want to speak to the woman sleeping out front of the building named Lottie. Then go back to Lubomir and talk to him again to accept his request to investigate the basement. If it isn't currently night out, you will need to skip time in order to have unrestricted access to the basement area. If you did skip tonight and Elena is still guarding the basement door or the door is locked, go back outside and skip time to the next night. 
In the basement, you'll find a room past the beds of sick people, which contains two items. The first is records of treatment found in the bookcase, and the other is unlabeled medicine found on the shelf. Picking up both items in the basement may automatically trigger the next step to speak to the two former patients, Bruno and Jahan, but if it doesn't, try presenting the medical records to Lubomir to progress the quest. Both Bruno and Jahan can be found sitting near the campfire outside of Walter's Tavern, just down the road from the Gracious Hand. After speaking to them, your quest will update with your new objective, which is to listen in on the secret meeting taking place in Vernworth Common Quarters. Before you get too close to the objective, I would recommend saving just in case Elena decides to flee for some reason. I ran pretty much straight up to them and the secret meeting triggered without a problem, so it is unlikely. After you witness the meeting, head back to Lubomir and show him all of the evidence you have, and he'll tell you to visit a doctor named Radcliffe in Checkpoint Rest Town. Visiting Radcliffe will allow him to examine the medicine over the course of a full day, which you can easily skip by using a nearby bench. Visit Radcliffe again to learn about the medicine's true nature, which is that it's actually a poison with very addictive properties. I dare say we could sell this. Immediately upon learning this, you can head back to the Gracious Hand and speak with Lottie to hear that Lubomir has been moved into the basement since his condition has gotten worse. You'll then want to head into the basement and tackle Elena to apprehend her. This will teleport you to the castle jail tower, and since you've gathered all the necessary evidence, you'll be freed of any wrongdoing with Elena confined to prison. You'll get the rewards 1600 XP and 11,000 gold for completing this quest successfully. Now there is a little post-quest objective still left to do, which helps us get the best possible ending to this whole storyline, and I'll cover that in just a second. If you tackle Elena without any of the evidence, when you bring her to jail, the guards will say that there doesn't seem to be enough proof that she's guilty, and the quest ends with you only getting 6,000 gold. Regardless of the ending you got, you should still be able to visit her in jail. But before you do anything, if you want to do a little extra post-quest objective to make sure Lubomir survives, you should immediately return back to the Gracious Hand and speak to Lottie. She'll tell you that without Elena, they don't have enough staff to take care of all the patients. So you should take a ride to the checkpoint rest town and make another visit to Radcliffe. He'll tell you that he's willing to help out at the Gracious Hand if you pay him 3,000 gold. Now you will need to do this pretty soon after you finish the Saint of the Slums quest, and I would recommend doing it immediately, otherwise Lubomir will die. Once you've hired Radcliffe to help out, you can return to the Gracious Hand and Lottie will reward you with a very strange gift of 10 Blighting Arrows. Now that the Gracious Hand has enough staff to continue operating, Lubomir's condition will improve, and he'll thank you for everything you've done. This is more of a feel-good bonus ending that you can get, but there are no significant rewards for doing it. Now that we've neatly tied the bow on that quest, you can go visit Elena in jail. Just keep in mind that the guards may start attacking you if you're not wearing the full Marcher's armor set, which can be bought from the armor vendor in Vernworth. With Elena imprisoned here, you'll have an opportunity to present her with the same unfinished letter that you showed Waldar. She'll tell you to visit the Forbidden Magic Research Lab which will update your Gossamer Clouds quest to the next step. I would recommend stopping at Checkpoint Rest Town on your way to Batal, which you kind of have to do anyway unless you have a fairy stone, to pick up the Mask of Concealment from the wandering trader named George. This will prevent you from being attacked while wandering around the Forbidden Magic Lab. I was wearing the Beastern Mask because at first that's what I thought you had to do, and when I tried to enter the Magic Lab through the main entrance of the Flamebearer Palace, the guards attacked me. If you don't want to buy any masks though, you can just sneak in through the back entrance. Literally nobody cared that I was looting stuff in front of them as long as the guards didn't see me. To find the back entrance, make your way through the residential ward of Backwoods Hall and cross the bridge leading to the lab. Here's how to get there. You would gather materials here, Master. Can we really afford to carry more? Once inside, you'll overhear a conversation between Wigley and Jerome about a letter that's recently arrived. 
You can find this letter in the same room that those two just walked out of when the conversation ends, which will update your quest to the final step. Feel free to explore the side rooms around this palace for some extra loot and lore while you're here. Now you can then return to Sven's chambers and speak with him once again. You'll be presented with two options here. The first is see for yourself, which shows him the letter, and the second option is just telling him it's nothing more than a love letter. Choose the option to let Sven see for himself to get the best ending, and he'll learn that Deesa's schemes involve making him the new ruler, while also planning on killing your character and the false sovereign. This will mark the quest as complete, and as a reward, you will get a fairy stone, 4,000 XP, and 20,000 gold. That's how to complete Saint of the Slums and A Veil vale of Gossamer Clouds. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, you are awesome. Subscribe if you want to see more guides on Dragon's Dogma 2, as well as other games coming soon.